All right, well, welcome everybody to our client education series. We're really excited to have you on um, with us tonight, this evening. My name is Sarah Rose Stack. I'm the Director of Internet Sales and Training with MA Web Centers. And I just love this series because it's really just dedicated to our clients and our potential clients and just educating you guys, not just on technology, because let's be you know, real about it. You guys all specialize in running your respective businesses and nonprofit organizations. And the digital marketing aspect of it is not necessarily at the forefront of your, um, of your mind. And so what we aim to do with this series is just make the application of all of the resources, all of the tools that are available to you guys today to market your business simpler. So while we do, um, go over how our technology can help you from a technical standpoint. The bigger focus of this specific series is more on the application of tools. So for example, we have an entire online uh, tutorial resource. If you actually go to mawebcenters.com, at the top right hand corner, if you click on help, um, you'll be taken to our help guide. You'll also have the option to choose our online learning center. And over there, there are short tutorial videos on how to use our technology, how to make an edit, how to use our email marketing system, how to add a product to your, to your online store. Um, just short tutorial videos. And of course, um, in addition to those videos, we also offer 24-7 live support where you can speak to somebody and just have them walk you through um, the various things that you're trying to do with our solution. So that's the technical aspect. Um, now, just to put this into perspective, um, while those tutorial videos are aimed at how to add a product uh, successfully to your online store, this particular series is more dedicated to successful marketing strategies behind really gaining traction with your online store. Um, and so uh, that's what this is all about. We do it every single month. It's free. So we recommend that you join. It's a new topic every month. And again, it's all geared toward making your marketing strategy simpler. So for tonight's session, uh, what we're going to be discussing is what makes a website work. Um, at this point of uh, this day and age, a digital marketing strategy has become very, very broad, but very critical to the success of your, your marketing strategy. You know, gone are the days where taking out a newspaper ad or a Yellow Pages ad was good enough and your online presence was the second or the afterthought. And we are now at a place where that's in the reverse, right? Where your digital marketing strategy is the most important one. And so one of the things that I want to do tonight for you is give you a picture, um, a very solid picture of, you know, what makes a good website and how do you, what makes a good website marketing strategy, meaning not just having a great website that functions well and gets the results that you want, but one that also is amplified properly so that you're not just engaging your, your um, existing client base, but you're also engaging um, potential customers and retaining existing customers and just really having a website that works, um, which is different than just having a website. So what we're going to cover tonight is design elements that work, um, we're going to talk a little bit about search engine optimization. There's three different ways that you can currently show up in Google, and I'm going to tell you what those three different ways are um, so that you can just assess, you know, how is my design working? How is my search working out? Um, am I engaging my viewers? How can I get more viewers or more traffic to my website? What are some other ways, social media strategies, email marketing strategies? What about referral marketing? All kinds of, the, the idea is how can you not just have a website that looks and functions well, but one that attracts viewers and have a digital strategy that sends viewers to that website so that you're getting the biggest engagement that you can possibly get um, so that that website is really working for your business. And overall, that's what we want to do is how can we make your website um, and, and really just coordinate with your online marketing strategy and your just overall marketing strategy as a whole. So that's going to be the, the dominant part of tonight's session. Um, and we will follow up with a few little things that make our solution, um, you know, ways that our solution makes all of those things easier. But really the majority of the session tonight is going to be just giving you valuable information so that when you're done, you can just take an assessment of how you're currently doing and where you're doing really well and maybe where are some areas that you might want to improve or look into some options. So if you are not yet a client of ours and someone invited you tonight, uh, one of the things that I encourage 
encourage you to do at the end, and I'll show you what it looks like, is just to take a 15-minute assessment with them where they can ask you some targeted questions so that you can get a really solid idea for how you're currently doing, where you're excelling, and again, where you'd like to improve. So I think the first thing to do is to simplify um, this scary term that can be a little bit daunting for um, you know, an average person. What is digital marketing? Digital marketing sounds like a very overwhelming or a very um, you know, just intimidating term because you just think digital, you know, that's outside of my, my element. I run a restaurant, I run a doctor's office, I run a landscaping business. So digital marketing sounds, you know, foreign to me. Um, and so what I want to do is just give you a simple definition because digital marketing is very simple. It, all it is, is marketing your product or service using digital channels to reach your consumers. So, um, a marketing strategy is, is basically marketing your products and services through any channel to reach consumers and digital. When you add digital to that, it just means things like search engines such as Google or Yahoo or social media or websites or listing sites or things like that. It's simply a digital way of marketing. And it, it, very simply put, the goal of digital marketing is to get your products and services in front of potential and existing customers. So that is the goal. It's a very simple definition. And everything that we talk about tonight is going to be focused around this idea of digital marketing. So if you're not sure if you need a digital strategy, I just want to talk to you from um, a a bigger picture and then I'll give you some stats but you know from a very simple perspective I want you to ask yourself where you are getting your news are you opening up the newspaper every morning and and reading the hard copy some people still do but the majority of people even if they do do that they're still getting their news online they're still checking um, you know their favorite news outlet website two or three times a day when they wake up or when they go to bed, right? That's where you're getting your news. Think about where you're socializing. You know, are you, is it true that through social media that you're probably more connected today with people from your past or people in your, you know, extended network more than before because of social media, right? We socialize online. We get our news online. We research online. If we have a question about anything, whether it's a product or whether it's a service, we're going online to research that product and service. And we're not just looking for what the vendors or the merchants of those products and services are saying about their products and services. We want reviews, right? We want to see what their customers are saying about that. And all that is, you guys, is word of mouth advertising online. The ability to go online and search for a product and service and see somebody else's comments about their experience with that product or service is one-to-one -one marketing. It's, it's word of mouth advertising. It's just amplified because it's available online. We research everything online though, right? I mean, think about the last time you had a question about, um, you know, uh, I don't know, a bug bite or a rash or something. You go to Google and you look it up and you, you try to do a little bit of a self-diagnosis because gosh, that's where we get all of our information. We play online, we get music, books, periodicals, all kinds of advice. We get it online. Every single person um, that I am in touch with um, and I interact with is plugged in in some sort of way. And they're all consumers of the internet in some way, shape, or form. And so the point is, is that your customers are using their phones on average right now, seven hours per day. And if they are plugged into the internet seven hours per day, or even if it was one hour per day, isn't that a great place to be? If you have a product or a service that you're trying to get in front of people, why not go where the people are? So just think about just think about how that used to be different 20 years ago. People used to be in front of the television several hours per day. And so the coveted marketing space um, was commercials, television commercials, right? Because if you could get there, you could get in front of where the people are. And now that's really different. In fact, most, um, most brands and big businesses are shifting their budget away from television advertising and moving it towards social media advertising, toward online advertising, because that's where the people are. Because people look exactly how they look on the phone on that screen right now. They're in front of their phones, and um, they're interacting with each other really on a on a live basis constantly. And so, if you own a small business or you own 
um, a medium or a big size business, it doesn't matter the size of your business or the organization that is that you're running, being online is really just the place to be because that's where the people are. And if, you know, again, from a big picture, that wasn't enough, take a look at some of the statistics that are out right now in terms of the internet climate, right? 78% of people um, every month are using Google to research products and services online. Um, there are more than 10.3 billion Google searches every single month. And again, 78% of them are using that that outlet just to research products and services. So it's not just something that people are going online to play or listen to music or whatever. It is something that we rely on for information as a, as a um, society. Social media budgets are projected to double in the next five years. Actually, this is um, a, tw a 2015 stat and it's actually higher now. And again, I think that really just falls back on the point that I made earlier about the difference between where people are. Again, people used to spend hours a day in front of the television, and now they don't want to do that. They don't have they have the option to not sit through television commercials with, you know, they can fast forward them or they can devo them or they can record and and you know rewind and fast forward at their leisure. But most people rather stream their their television shows online at their own convenience when they feel like it. And so again, most brands, big, small to big, are moving from that online to the social media and the online digital um, marketing because that's where they're going to get their bigger ROI or return on investment. 48% of consumers say that email is their preferred form of communication with brands. Um, you know, most people, again, 10, 15, 20 years ago would prefer to be called if they, you know, if they were looking for more information on a product or service and that has changed. Today, more people would prefer to be emailed. They'd rather leave their email and have you send them information that they can read and think about on their own time without the pressure of having a conversation. And, you know, that's just the reality of it. They want the ability to do their research on their own time on their own terms. And, you know, communication over email or over text allows them to do that. 62% of people of uh, emails are open on mobile devices, 48% uh, on small smartphones and 14 on tablets. And really, that's just letting you know how important mobile is. I I'll throw another thing out there. Last year, um, in the spring, there was a little thing that was dubbed mobile get in. And what mobile get in was, was Google released a whole new rule. And what they found was the majority of people that were searching for things on Google on their uh, smartphones, if the website was not mobile optimized, if that website was not responsive or ready for a mobile device, if it was a regular, just regular website, they didn't stay on the web. So they, they actually clicked away from that result and went looking for others and sometimes went into even different search engines and looked for different options because they wanted a mobile optimized website. So Google is in the business of giving referrals, right? And so what they want is they want to refer to you a great website with what you're looking for and they want to nail that on the first couple of results because they know that if you get good results, you're going to come back to Google. If you get results that you're not happy with, whether that content is is not exactly what you were looking for, or say that that website was not optimized for mobile and it wasn't a good experience, so you just go back and look for something else, then you stop going there. And so what they decided was if, if um, somebody searches for something on Google on a mobile device, say I whip out my iPhone and I search for a local restaurant on my iPhone, um, Google is only going to show me results that are mobile optimized first. If your website is not mobile friendly and optimized for mobile or responsive, then you automatically got pushed down, um, you know, way further down in the results because they pushed all of the mobile ones ahead of you. So mobile matters, you guys. If your website is not mobile friendly right now, then you're not getting the visibility on search engines that you should be getting. Um, internet advertisers expenditures surpassed newspaper and spending for the first time in 2015. Um, internet ads now account for 21% of advertising dollars, second only to television and 40%. And again, in this next year, in the next two to three years, I guarantee that that internet advertising dollars will be higher than television ads. Um, Again, due to where the people are, 52% of marketers are saying that their company blog is an important channel for content marketing, meaning they're providing valuable content. And that's a big thing, you guys. People want content. They don't, it's the way that information is flowing. 
It's just they want more and more and more. Your website needs to be, is not just a billboard. It is not just a running ad. It needs to be resourceful. It needs to be valuable for the customer base as well. So the world is online. I hope we can all agree on that. <laughs> Local businesses and organizations, the good news for you guys is, you know, you do need a solution to compete, but when you do find the right solution, that puts you in a position to compete. It's an even playing field with some of these big box businesses that are out there because if you have a website that can provide the, the good kinds of content, up-to-date content, and interact with people the way they want to be interacted with online, now you're actually in the game. If you don't have that solution, then people might click away. They might not stay engaged with you. So let's talk about a website that works. Um, because before you start marketing a website, you need one that functions well, that looks right, and does all the things that it's supposed to do. So the first thing um, that makes a website work is branding, right? Branding is when your customer visits your website, there's a clear sense of your brand. Who is your business? Who are you? What do you do? When they see the website, it looks like your business. So the question to ask yourself is really, you know, is your website design consistent with other marketing materials, advertising that you do, or the way that your, your storefront is set up in the first place. Um, I personally have worked with a number of businesses who have had incredible, um, really just long running businesses with um, very professional storefront, a uh, jewelry store, for example, beautiful store, incredible products, the best prices, the most beautiful items, unique items. You walked into that place and you knew you were in a professional um, established business, but the website was so far off from the brand, like the way that their, what their business truly was. Um, and it didn't have anything to do with any of the other marketing that they were doing. They had brochures and catalogs and all kinds of really beautiful marketing material that just, you know, their website was not consistent with that collateral marketing material. And so what ended up happening is the website was actually working against them. It almost would have been better off for them to not even have a website because at that point um, it was not accurately representing their brand. So one thing that you should do is just, you know, consistently, let's say you're a restaurant, have um, a consistent color scheme, a logo, maybe a consistent font, and just start there, right? A consistent look and feel for everything that you put out. So that means your menu, um, your takeout menus, your website, any advertising that you do, the first thing that you can do is just, again, make sure that your logo is consistent across the board, the colors that you're using is consistent, and the fonts are consistent. Um, if you want to take it to another level, you can add different design elements, but at a bare minimum, you want to make sure all of your branding is consistent. The second thing that makes a website work well is accurate content. Today, there is, uh, there is a, an expectation that when a customer goes to your website, the content is completely accurate and up to date. So six years ago, you could get away with having out of date pricing or out of date uh, product information or uh, contact information because updating your website was not necessarily something that was at your, was at the forefront of your mind. Well, today, when you get to a website, there's just no patience for that because everybody expects a website to be up to date. So you need to have a solution for that, right? Um, is your website up to date? Is it easy to update? Do you feel like you should be updating that website more often than you currently are? Um, do you have the resources to update your website? Do you have a solution that's easy enough to update? But these are, these are important questions to ask yourself because you know, at the end of the day, if you're marketing your website really, really well and they get there and it's not branded and the content's all, you know, out of date, it's not, it doesn't matter how much traffic you send to that website. If it's, if it's not current content, it's not going to work um, to, to your advantage. The third thing to keep in mind is the user experience, meaning customers or visitors that arrive at your website need to be able to easily navigate and use your website. So think about yourself. When you go to a website, you look for websites that are engaging, that are visual, that are easy to find what you want, right? When you go to a website that is just, especially on the homepage, loaded with text, most people don't read that. 
right? They just skim through it or they read none of it and they click away because it looks like a homework assignment. So to have a great user experience, you want to ask yourself, you know, is your site visually appealing and easy to use? If you went to your website as a consumer, um, was it something where the content was visually laid out, it was appealing, it was intriguing, it made you want to click through. Did Were you able to find everything that you wanted? Was the phone number easy to find? Simple, right? Most people don't realize that just by throwing your phone number in the top right corner in a place where people are used to seeing a phone number, you save your, your viewer a bunch of click-throughs and they're more likely to call you. Right. Another important one is, is the website mobile friendly? That's a very critical component of a user experience, because at this point, um, mobile viewing on websites is accounting for almost half of all website viewing. And again, as more and more people get uh, mobile devices and not just um Younger folks, guys, even uh, the baby boomer generation, the 64 to 75 year old um, category, the majority of them are using um, their mobile devices to open email at this point because it's just the most convenient. But the more that mobile grows, and I'm telling you, that's the that is the the way that the direction of um, the internet consumption is going. The more important the mobile experience is going to be. So at this point, people really have two options to go mobile. They can either create a mobile website or they can just create a responsive website. A mobile website is a second website that is a mobile version. I don't recommend doing that because it generally means that you have to manage content on your mobile website separate from your regular website. So now that's double the work for the same thing, right? And you just don't, that's just not worth it. The other big part that um, I'm not fond of in terms of creating a mobile website is that um, in addition to having to manage your content separately, um, it also calculates web traffic separately. So anybody that goes to your mobile website and anyone that goes to your regular website counts as two different um, groups of traffic, which doesn't work in your favor for search engine ranking because they don't look at the combined traffic and that you're a really solid uh, website. They look at it as separate things. The best way to get um, a mobile friendly website is to just simply create a responsive website. It's a website that automatically adjusts for whatever device it's being viewed on. The best part about that is you just create the website um, one time and if it's viewed on an iPhone, it automatically loads an iPhone friendly version. If it's viewed on a desktop, it does that for a desktop version and you don't have to do it twice. And of course, because it's one website, all of the traffic is working in your favor. And finally, audiences. So one of the biggest mistakes that we find uh, some, um, business owners making is they treat their website like a commercial. Um, and they do that with their social media presences as well. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, but you have to keep in mind that your website should be built for existing customers as much as it should be built for your potential customers. So the question to ask yourself here is, is your content written for both uh, types of visitors or is it aimed only at trying to get new business? Because first of all, you want to you want to engage your existing customer base just as much as you're trying to get new new business because the more you engage your existing ones, the more opportunities you have to keep them uh, you know for a repeat order or a long-term client of yours, right? Um, secondly, that's something that we look for. When I personally go to a website, if all I see is sell, 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 and I don't see any effort made uh, to be a resource for me as a customer, then I, that turns me off because I look at that website as, oh, they're just trying to sell me something. They're not invested in the long-term relationship with me to them as a customer. And so it's funny because not only will you writing your website for existing customers work for retention, it's also going to help you to gain new business because it shows your potential customers that you're invested in them in that business relationship for the long run. So writing your content for both visitors is very important as well. So to recap, branding, you want to make sure your website is branded and consistent with collateral marketing materials. You want to make sure that that content is up to date always, that you have a good solution for that because people expect accurate content. 
Um, you also want to make sure that the website is built for a good user experience, meaning it's visual, uh, it's appealing, it's easy to use and navigate, it's mobile friendly, and there are ways for your visitors to interact with you. And finally, that the content itself is written and geared toward both existing and potential um, customers. So what I want to do is show you a couple of websites that work. Now these sites that we're about to, that I'm about to showcase to you are websites that were designed by our uh, design center, and there's a couple of different. Um, ones that we're gonna show you. So what you're seeing right now is an insurance company that was designed, and as you can see, there's a clear sense of branding, right? When you look at the design of this website, it's very obvious that this is a professional service provider. This is an insurance company. It is not, it is not designed um, to be a hipster design or to be you know, uh, getting you to want to eat um, out at some restaurant. It's very clearly branded as a professional services um, uh, type of industry. The other great thing is that you can notice that the content is easy to read. It's very much visually driven. So even on this homepage, you've got this beautiful picture of a home. You've got some text. It's easy to navigate. Request right here. It's interactive. There's a request right on the homepage. And it's image driven here. So you've got personal insurance, business, and about us. And all of those have great images behind there. Whereas, you know, 10 years ago, this homepage might have been all text. The other great thing is this is what a responsive design looks like. So you could see on the um, desktop and the laptop here, I'm showing you the uh, desktop version. So the homepage got, has a great image right here with a nice little call to action. The phone number is clearly laid out right here with this red popping out of the person, very easy to find. Um, and it's when you go to the mobile view, it's optimized for mobile and the tablet view is, is optimized for tablet. Um, and so the great thing about this is when this website was designed, um, there was no need for this person to design all the different versions. It's just automatically loading an optimized version because that makes the user experience, which as you know is really important, just better. Um, the other thing I want to say about the visual part of this is some businesses don't lend themselves to you know, your own images. So an insurance company, for example, is not necessarily going to showcase their client portfolio's images because that might be a little bit weird and um, just not a, a good privacy thing, right? So this is a great use of stock photography where somebody that maybe they don't have personal or you know, more personalized images to use on their website, that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be image driven. What you want to do instead is find images that inspire uh, the person to use your service anyway, and just use stock photography. This next one is an artist, and this is a this is an artist uh, based out of California. And again, it's a clear sense of branding. When you look at this website, you know exactly what you know the art of lemon hue is all about. Um, the content again is easy to read. You've got. Um, all the different views showing up for you to take a look at. But here you've got your three different areas, which are, excuse me, which are all, um, there's an image first to get your attention. And then the title is in red, the, you know, um, artwork of the day, collections about me with just a little bit of text, because the goal is not to throw everything about your business on the homepage. The goal is to get them to click on it, right? You want them to click on it. So if you lay that out in a visual way, then people will be more inspired to go ahead and click through. Again, it's a, it's a responsive design, but the difference here is this is a great use of the client's artwork. It's, it's still image driven, but it's, it's featuring the client's artwork um, and the client's own personal images in a really responsible way. So again, in the in this in this type of industry, that might not make sense because just for the industry, it, it makes more sense to use stock photography. But you can get the same kind of result with more personalized images here if you can. And by the way, if it if you can and it does make sense to use personalized images, I 100% always recommend to do that. Um, for something like this, using stock photography doesn't make sense. And so you want to make sure that if it, if it would serve you better to use your own images, you always want to use great photography. 
Uh, there's a great shopping experience built right into this. And again, it's written not just for um, people that want to buy the artwork. It's written for fans of the artwork as well. There's a lot of great history and a lot of thought that went into this website that make it a great user experience for potential customers of this artwork as well as the fans of the, of the artwork itself. So those are two very different uh, examples, but I hope that makes sense to you. So what we want to now talk about is it's not just about a website, right? Um, we know that we need a great website. Um, and I hope that after that you know, advice, you know what makes a great website work and have a couple of ideas in your mind. So it's not just about that, though. Having a great website that you don't market is sort of like getting yourself a telephone number that you're not going to share with anybody. Um, it doesn't work. Nobody's ever going to call you if you don't share your phone number. So the same theory applies with your website. If you have a great website and nobody finds out about it, then it's not going to work for you. So you also need traffic to the website. You need a social media strategy. You need to be visible on search engines like Google. You need emails and a .com name. You need to think about your email marketing strategy, your campaigns that you might want to run. And, you know, in order to have up-to-date content, you're going to need the ability to make those changes, some sort of solution or resource to make sure that that content is accurate. If you want to sell online, what is your e-commerce solution? Um, you need analytics because if you're not tracking the success of your digital marketing, you're not sure what's working well and what's not because, um, you know, it's not just about finding, you know, what's not working. It's about finding what is working, right? So let's say you're running specials on social media on Monday mornings and you're finding that you're getting a ton of traffic to your website on that day. Well, that lets you know, gosh, that's really working and we want to keep doing that. Um, it lets you know that. Let's say you run a Sunday newspaper ad and you're not getting an increase in traffic to your website. Well, that lets you know that maybe that's something that you can uh, lower the budget for and redirect that marketing uh, budget to something else that could work better for your business. Analytics is huge. And a lot of people underestimate the importance and the efficacy of having a good solution for analytics. You also need secure hosting. Um, there are so many hosting solutions that are out there right now. And um, not to talk negatively about them, but one of the most uh, popular ones that are out there happens to be the number one most hacked website in the world. Um, and so, you know, when you're choosing to host your website with someone, um, it's always important to ask what their security um, protocols are. You know, what is their uptime? What is, uh, you know, have they had any security breaches? You need to ask those questions because as a business, when your website is down, your business is down. Um, if you are taking payment online, you know, the, the security of your customers, very, very important financial information should be um, very important to you. And so security is important. And to me, the most important thing that everybody needs today is support. Because again, and I said this in the very first couple of minutes, um, business owners, you guys all specialize in whatever it is that you specialize in. That's why you run that business. If you're running a landscaping company, um, that means you have a passion for that and that's what you're really great at and that's what you specialize in. You know, all of these things that you're seeing on the screen right now are not likely what you specialize in. And so again, that can be very overwhelming and very daunting. And so what most business owners do if they don't have the support system built in is they end up just doing nothing. And uh, it really, it's a shame because these are things that could really be driving the business that you want to run that really great landscaping business that you want to run. Um, and it can really bring a lot of customers to the table and it can really bring a lot of retention and adoption to the table. And so the support system that you have for your digital strategy is probably one of the most important things that your di digital strategy um, should have. So let's talk a little bit about visibility and traffic, right? What does that mean? Where are you currently found on the internet? Um, so what, what that basically means is if someone went to Google or Yahoo or social media and they were looking for you, where are you currently showing up? How are you currently ranking on the search engine? So for example, let's say you own a roofing company. If someone were to Google roofing in your town or your county, are you showing up on that first page or in the first couple of results or are you not showing up? 
That's a really important question to ask yourself because that's where people are going to look for products and services. So you want to make sure that you're showing up. Um, how visible are you with your existing customer base? And what that simply means is, does your existing customer base know that you have a website? And is your website um, something that they can actually do something with if they're already a customer? And really, overall, what is your strategy? Um, you know, how are your customer or your competition ranking on the search engines versus how you are ranking on the search engines? And what is your strategy to make sure that you're ranking really well and that you're visible online so that you could drive as much traffic as you can to that really awesome website that we just built for you, right? So currently, there are three different ways or major ways that you can show up in search. Um, we're gonna we're gonna focus today on on or excuse me tonight on Google because that's where most people are going first. I mean Google, it's practically a verb at this point. So the first way that you can show up is uh, called paid placement, and what those are are ads. So right here on the left, I just googled uh, roofers in Springfield, Massachusetts, and what you notice on the left are, at the very very top are the ads. This is paid placement. So you want to think about this like. A paid advertising space. So it's like a television commercial for the internet or a billboard for the internet. Um, it's your way of ensuring that you are going to show up for certain searches on Google at the top. Um, Google ads are like paid billboards on the internet. It's the very first thing that you see. So it's ahead of the other two ways that you can show up. Please note that at the top, they're all also labeled as ads, right? So what you're going to see in a paid placement is a business name, um, followed by their website and a, and a label for ads. So here we have, you know, uh, roofers in Springfield, Mass, affordableroofersma.com, ad, the, and then the actual .com name. Now below that, you're going to see some keywords or a short write-up and some other, uh, these are the keywords here and here's a short write-up. So they did a nice job. They have some really great things in their write-up. We'll make roofing affordable, 100% financing, 12M no payments. Um, and free estimates, $5 million insured lifetime warranty. So if I'm looking for a roofer in this area and I see this ad, what I see right here is, is basically going to help me decide whether or not I'm going to click on it. And so they did, I think they actually did a really nice job of finding some really great things that are going to pop out at someone that's skimming and make them want to click there. So again, the first thing that you can see is a paid placement. It's labeled as an advertisement and it goes. Up. it's the very first thing that shows up. The second thing right below that is what we call local listings. These are free, um, and this is an organic rank ranking, meaning it's not something that you pay for. It's something that shows relevant re results, the most relevant local results. It shows up right below the ads. Um, I do want to mention that in, in this exact same search, this is all from the same search, Roofers in Springfield, Massachusetts, um, and on here, the organic uh, rankings are um, actually all clients of Web Solutions by MA Web Centers. So that's really great that they're showing up uh, one, two, and three. Now, the thing here is you're going to see the business name. You'll see some reviews, an address, a phone number, a little icon here for a website and directions. And a lot of times when you click on that, you get a more in-depth profile when you click on a choice. So if I were to click on this, it would almost look a lot like Yelp right, where you look there and you see a little bit more of a um, picture into what that, that result is. And um, then the person will likely go ahead and uh, click to learn more. But the thing I like about this is there's some social element built into this as well because there are reviews. People can leave reviews, which is really, really nice. By the way, that's something that you should be monitoring is, you know, do you have any reviews on Google? Um, and if so, are they great? Are they, you know, if, can you ask your happy customers to leave more good reviews? All of that works in your favor. Um, so the first one is paid. You're paying for that placement. The second one is, is free. It's something that you should just be showing up for. And if you have submitted to these search engines, it's something that they will recommend you for. Um, by the way, um, I already mentioned this, but did you know that when people Google a term on a mobile device, Google is only recommending websites that are mobile, friendly, or responsive, and the reason is simple. 40% of people are abandoning a website if it takes too long to load. One of the reasons a website will take too long to load is if it's not optimized for mobile. Um, and so, you know, obviously by having a mobile website, it's going to load faster on a mobile device, which is going to make them actually want to stay on it. 67% um, of people 
are more likely to purchase from a mobile friendly website. And finally, 74% of people are more likely to revisit mobile optimized websites. So the statistics are there. And um, we as consumers of the internet are saying to the search engines, we want mobile friendly websites when we're looking on our mobile devices. And so Google, again, is only recommending mobile friendly websites um, when people search on, on a mobile device. Some tips for great local listings, check them, right? Constant Contact surveyed 350 businesses and 50% of people at about those 350 came across inaccurate listings, meaning they just haven't checked in a while and they, they went there and they looked at their local listing and they're like, wow, they have our wrong phone number or the address is incorrect or that's an old website from 10 years ago. So you wanna make sure you're checking that local listing for accuracy because gosh, there's nothing worse than you, you know, people finding your service and then they can't actually contact you because your information is inaccurate. Um, out of that 350 people that they surveyed, 49% of people never even checked their listing at all, had no idea if they had one, um, weren't sure if it was accurate or weren't sure if reviews were being left. So, you know, this is just good information to keep in the back of your mind. You know, make sure you're checking on your search engines. Are you showing up and is that information accurate? Now, finally, the last thing I wanna show you is what we call organic placement. So the first thing people see is that paid placement followed by the local listings, which had that specific kind of layout that I showed you. And then below that, you're gonna see other results. And these organic other results um, consist of a business name, a website, contact information, keywords, and a write-up. They show up again after the ads in the local listings, and they're organic. So what these results are based on are your website's content, the, con the website's page titles, and your website's keywords all, at, all mixed together. Um, other things that can play a factor in here are other websites like review sites or things like Yelp or, you know, other portal type websites, social media or articles that your business is mentioned in. So here you see, um, you know, for the roofers in Springfield, Massachusetts, you saw your paid placements, your local listings, and then you found some other websites that talk about this. So you've got the Better Business Bureau, Home Advisor, Yellow Pages, one, you know, and then you have two other actual um, roofing company websites. Again, and by the way, our actual web solution clients. So one of the nice things about how we build websites is we make sure that the content, the keywords, and the page titles are all congruent, all consistent, so that your website has a better chance of showing up on that first page um, without having to pay for that kind of placement. If your website is not has not been built with those kinds of things in mind, it's worth looking at our, our organic search engine optimization packages because you pay it one time and the team will go through your website and make sure your content, keywords, and page titles all make sense so that you can show up here organically and not have to pay for that over and over and over again. So um, other things that can increase your search engine value, and by the way, it's also gonna drive more quality traffic to your website, are consumer reviews. Um, when, uh, when you have consumer reviews, it's gonna increase the SEO value because um, it's gonna just give you more options to show up, um, especially if they leave their city and state. In addition to that, the quality is better. 88% of consumers read online reviews to determine the quality of a local business. And think about yourself. I do the same thing. I know personally when I'm looking at local business options, especially when I'm traveling, I want to see what consumer what the consumer reviews are before I make a decision. 85% um, of consumers said that they read up to 10 reviews before making a decision. 72% said that a positive review made them trust a local business more, and 88% trusted online reviews just as much as personal recommendations. And we all know how powerful a personal recommendation is. One-to-one -one marketing or referral marketing or word-of-mouth marketing is the most powerful way to market your business because someone else's um, you know, review of you is, it just adds a substantial amount of credibility. And so having consumer reviews gives you the option to do that. So having consumer reviews is something that you want to be a part of your online strategy. So some ways to get better um, reviews or to get more reviews is to just ask for them. Your e-commerce or your online store should prompt buyers to leave a review. 
If you have an online store that doesn't have consumer reviews, then this is not going to work for you. So you want to make sure your online store allows for online reviews. So our solution, I'm showing you actually an item through one of our customers' websites. And right over here, it says, write your own review. And people are able to um, read customer reviews on all of the products as well, which is really great because for a small to medium-sized business to have that kind of capability is very, very powerful. And it takes your e-commerce solution um, uh, presence to the next level. Also ask if you have a service-based business that, you know, just because you're not selling products online like this company is doesn't mean you shouldn't be asking. Service-based businesses should have spots on their website that ask for feedback um, so that, again, you can have a testimonials page. And by the way, when you can cherry pick which testimonials it is that you want to feature on your website. And a big tip is to always include the city and the state. When you include the city and the state, that helps increase your SEO value so that on that organic other kind of listings, you're going to show up better. Um, always ask for email as well because you can go ahead and interact with them and add them to an email list and, and be able to email market to them in the future. One really important tip, especially on like social um, social media channels is never delete a negative review. People trust reviews more when they see that it's not just positive reviews. If they only see, um, you know, five star rating, five star rating, five star rating, etc., it causes concern about censorship. Um, people go and they see that, you know, it looks like you have deleted negative reviews. The other thing is, especially on social media. If people have seen a negative review and they see that it's gone missing, that doesn't that just really works against your online reputation. It just looks like, okay, now they're now they don't trust that you're putting the full picture out there or that you have something to hide. And so I want to share with you um, a, a great example of how to handle this the right way. Um, the best strategy is to solicit positive feedback to counter the negative ones or to just start a conversation online and show people how you handle um, a third tier support case, right? What ends up happening is you help the person in the public arena that they chose to, you know, deal with their, their challenge. And it shows people that you care, that you're, you're customer service oriented. And it also shows the resolution in that public arena. Um, so this particular person left, um, it, you know, you can see here they have five star reviews, 30, one four star and one one star. And this person actually left an, um, the one star review. They didn't leave any comments. And most likely it was actually a mistake. They meant to click something else, but they clicked on the one star by accident um, or they didn't mean to click on it at all. So this particular business owner wrote an excellent response to that to that um one star review. And they wrote, I noticed that, you know, your one star review of our studio, I just want to touch base with you about your experience here. Because as a small business, we depend so much on word of mouth advertising and our client satisfaction. Every review and opinion counts. I don't believe you've taken a class here. But if I'm mistaken, and you have and you had a poor experience, I would so appreciate it if you would let me know, so that we may address any issues and keep improving. If you've never taken one of our classes, I invite you to come try one out. We really love what we do. We truly love the people we get to work with. And I'd love to share that with you. All the best. Smiley face, right? And so it was really great. I mean, this particular business owner noticed that this was likely a mistake, um, that they didn't see that this person had ever taken a class at their particular establishment. And, you know, so without calling them out in a negative way or getting aggressive or combative, they were really warm about it. And they just left, a, you know, a follow up. And to me, that just shows a positive, honest reputation. And it shows someone that's, you know, committed to also saying, hey, if I'm mistaken, and you did have a bad experience, how can I make that better? This works in their favor in the best way, way better than just deleting a review. Another thing that can help for consumer reviews is just be visible on consumer uh, review sites. Those are sites like Urban Spoon, Angie's List, Google+, Yelp, TripAdvisor, etc. Those websites solely exist to collect and give reviews, so you want to make sure that your site is listed on those sites and that you're monitoring the activity. Um, it's also a good idea to ask your customers to leave reviews. I know at my son's gymnastics uh, gym, when you walk through the door, right on the um, front door, there's a little printout that says, please leave a review for us on Yelp because they want to increase their online reputation. 
go ahead and ask for those reviews offline. So exa exa uh, just like I just said, you can leave printouts or you could teach your staff or your customers to um, go ahead and leave reviews online. You can even offer incentives for those reviews. Say, you know, send emails to your loyal customer base, et cetera. But the more positive reviews you can collect online, uh, the higher reputation you're going to give yourself um, for your online reputation, which is going to serve you in terms of consumer reviews. Another great tip is spread the word on social media, right? Once a week, just pick one testimonial and, sh and blast it out on your social media channels. Um, please don't edit them, even if there's spelling errors or grammatical errors. Always post testimonials exactly how they were given. Um, people can tell when you're censoring or editing, and it's always better to just you know, put it out there exactly how it is. Spread the positive news about your business in a nice way. So speaking of social media, uh, is that important? Well, 83% of marketers are indicating that social media is important for their business. 83%, 85% are um, expect a business to be active on social media. So that does that, that's a, a key word there, active, meaning you don't just have a business Facebook page for your business, but you're also active on it. Um, restaurants with a 3.5 uh, rating on Yelp were 63% more likely um, to be full than ones with three stars, just a half a star difference, 63% increase. Um, this is an incredible stat. Social media has a 100% higher lead to close rate than outbound marketing. Um, and Facebook is currently the most popular social network. And that's coming from Nielsen. So what I want to do is just give you a couple of quick tips to have a good social strategy. The first one is to understand your social media audiences. Um, what is the social um, uh, network best for? What is it good for? And who is it geared toward? So Facebook is the most important one because that is the most popular one currently. Um, its primary audience is all. all. Um, most people are on Facebook <laughs> at all ages. It's really good for sharing text, photos, videos, and links, but it's best for en sharing engaging content um, and reaching a larger audience. Twitter is great for young adults. LinkedIn is great for business. So if you have a business to business kind of business, LinkedIn would be a great platform for you. Pinterest is really great uh, for crafters. Mostly women are using Pinterest and uh, foodies are using Pinterest. So if you have anything that is restaurant or recipe or um, fashion or, you know, um, that kind of thing or any kind of decor related business, that would be great for you. Google Plus tends to have mostly men and students that are engaging with them and really attractive for software developers. So, you know, this is a great chart. Feel free to take a screenshot of this. Um, this video will be up and it's being recorded. But just understand that for most businesses, Facebook is a really great place to start. Um, I think that LinkedIn is the second most um, effective one, especially for people that are in a B2B um, environment. But for most businesses, Facebook is the best place to start because that's where the people are. And, and just, you know, as an entrepreneur myself, it makes sense to go where the people are. I'd rather market in a really large pond than, you know, um, be marketing something that's really geared toward um, my baby boomers or Gen X people, and I'm on Twitter, which is mostly engaging for young adults. So the, the best part is, you know, <laughs> there's a ton of them, but the best thing that you can do is filter through the different networks, master a few, and in my opinion, just start with Facebook. So a couple of quick tips for posting. We live in a scroll world, meaning, you know, we all have our iPhones or our Androids or whatever, and you scroll through your device and um, that means that every single post that you post should have some sort of a photo or a video. People are very visual. So if something has something that is visually engaging, they are more likely to look at it longer or click on it. If it's text heavy um, or it is not engaging um, in, a visual, in a visual way, uh, they're more likely to just scroll by it. So you want to make sure that it's media rich, meaning it has some sort of a video or a photo that is attached to it. Another quick tip about photos is, um, you know, Facebook right now, they allow you to make a post that has several photos instead of just one. And what I have found is that those tend to have less engagement than if you had just chosen one photo. So it can be very, very um, helpful to just as hard as it is to just choose one great photo for your posts. 
Um, and then here's the social strategy that we recommend for businesses um, because most people are not, they're doing this in the reverse. Um, they, they treat their social media platform as a commercial or a sounding board and that doesn't engage anybody. You have to remember that social media needs to be social. And so if your content is not social or if it's not engaging, then people aren't going to actually care when you have a special or something really great that you, or an offer that you want to share with them. So we recommend a 1031 formula for sharing. That means 10 shares of entertaining, interesting, or inspirational posts, right? So out of the, you know, the 14 things that you're going to do, 10 of them should not be offers, should not be deals, should not be selling. It should just be entertaining, interesting, inspirational stuff, things that people would want to click on. Three of them should be industry-specific information, meaning it's just valuable content about your industry. Uh, it has nothing to do, um, you know, it doesn't have to do with your specific offers or whatever. It could be a blog that you wrote or it could be a third party blog that, that was written that you really liked. So, for example, on ours, we'll write a blog about social media sharing and we'll post that. That's an industry specific, valuable content for our customers that we, you know, that we aim to work with. Um, there are times that I might go to success.com or entrepreneur.com or web, you know, um, magazine.com and I'll see a really great article written there that could be beneficial for our clients. I'm not selling them anything. I just found something that could be beneficial. It's industry specific and I'm passing that valuable information along. That helps to establish you as a professional in your industry. One share should be of a specific product offer for your business. Just one. Um, unfortunately, most people are doing this in the reverse and they're doing 10 shares of products, um, offers and maybe one or two things of industry specific things and very few things that are entertaining or interesting or just inspirational, right? So 10, three, one, 10 entertaining, interesting, inspirational, three industry specific, one of a specific company product offer or, um, special that you have going on or something like that. And then you just repeat this. This will keep you from being sales pitchy and this will get your audience really engaging with you, which is when social media starts to be magical. If you can get your audience actually liking your stuff and commenting on your stuff and engaging with your stuff, that's when it becomes inc incredibly powerful. So in your social strategy, are you using social networks? Is that content valuable? Are you posting consistently? Would you like to be more visible on different social platforms? Are you interacting and are you calling to action? These are great questions to ask yourself. Um, we can help you with this, of course, um, but it's a really great temperature to take. Um, another great thing, again, we mentioned earlier that people prefer to be interacted with over email or text, right? So a couple of email marketing tips. Number one is content, content, content. Um, you should have a single clear message with a compelling subject line that's relevant content and calls to action. Um, a little tip is if your company blogs, a lot of uh, people that blog use email campaigns to drive traffic to the blog. So they'll just write the title in one short little interesting sentence about the, the article and drive traffic to the article. Timing is important. Timing is everything. So when you write content in advance, you don't want to necessarily publish it right away. You might want to schedule that delivery at optimal time. So for example, Tuesdays at noon have the highest open rate for email campaigns, according to Constant Contact. And um, you know that they're a very large provider for email marketing. And um, so it's a great, it's a great thing to keep in mind. So if you write an article on, you know, Thursday, it's probably worth it to hold off on sending that campaign off until Tuesday at noon if you know that that's going to have a higher likelihood statistically of that email being opened. Um, and second, just know your audience, right? Can you add any local flavor? I always segment my audiences and, you know, so that they get relevant messages. So if I have, um, you know, an existing customer base, I'm going to send them different messaging than people that have asked for information for a first time buyer, right? If you can segment your audiences and send relevant content to them, you're going to increase your results. We talked about the importance of analytics. You want to measure your marketing results. When you do that, um, you can not just measure how much traffic you're getting. You're going to be able to measure the results of your website performance itself, your search engine performance, traditional advertising, and other um, marketing efforts that you're making. You can measure the results of that 
based on your website traffic, right? Unfortunately, a lot of people are not measuring um, their marketing efforts at all um, or because they just don't have a way. So one really great way to measure the results of the marketing efforts that you do as a business is to simply have analytics. So you can check, okay, if I... Um, you know, uh, ran a TV commercial at 1 p.m. every day this week, and I'm not seeing a, a an, an increase in web traffic, it's not working. Or, hey, I'm seeing a way more web traffic at 1 p.m. I want to keep doing that. Having analytics allows you to really take a granular approach to seeing not just your website performance, but all marketing performance. So, I hope that's been valuable content. I do want to quickly just mention that we aim to simplify all of that for you. <laughs> Our solutions are, are meant to be professional, affordable, easy to maintain, all-inclusive, secure, supported, and a partnership. We look at our um, relationship with all of our clients as being in partnership with them and that we aim to be their biggest support system. So when they need assistance with anything related to our digital our marketing solution, we're there 24-7, excluding U.S. major holidays. Um, we help businesses and organizations with increasing revenues, decreasing expenses, increasing customer satisfaction. We love to streamline their business practices because our solutions are so all-inclusive. A lot of times we can really simplify that strategy for them and help them to eliminate other digital bills that they might have. Um, we want them to increase engagement. We want to help market your business. That's what we do. That is the benefit of what we do. We've got all kinds of technology to help achieve this, but our goal is exactly what you're seeing on the screen right now. I want to share with you a couple of quick uh, testimonials. Um, this is a before of a local restaurant, Shermerhorn Seafood. This is a third generation business. Um, a great example of somebody that has an incredible restaurant, yet their website was not branded properly to their restaurant, so it wasn't working in their favor. Um, so, you know, here's what they said, having our, our website increase our order out uh, business substantially. We especially love the new email marketing system, save them money from having to go through constant contact. And better than that, it was simpler. So they used to have an email marketing uh, account with constant contact, but because we include email marketing for free with all of our websites, they were able to eliminate that bill and yet still have the same return on, on um, the email campaigns. This is their before and this is their after. As you can see, the Design Center did an incredible job branding this restaurant so that it's beautifully designed and inspiring. I mean, when I see this, I want to go eat there. In fact, I have eaten here several, several times. They also have a really awesome buffalo chicken pizza. <laughs> so we love what they do, um, and there's just no question about it. Branding is everything. If you see this, you think they're a pizza joint with some you know, cheap, cheap seafood. When you see this website, the branding is substantially better. The design is incredibly engaging, and it makes the person want to actually eat there. Here is that jewelry store um, that I was talking about earlier. You know, their first year online with their old website, they had no online sales, obviously, and the website was literally uh, like it looked exactly like this. It was basically a scanned black and white newspaper ad. So it not not only um, did uh, not only do they have a more beautiful website now that accurately represents the quality of their business, but it was coupled with other marketing tools. And in their first year, they cleared six figures in online sales. So this is the new website, completely image driven. Um, obviously, the engagement um, is incredible, is way higher because when people see the categories, they're like diamonds or Pandora beads or you know trendy things or estate jewelry or whatever. It's just image driven now, and so obviously they're getting a way better return on that investment. So you know we have high, um, an incredible solution. It's so much more than a website. We again we understand that just building you a website is not enough. We're not like other website developers or cheap hosting providers that just want to take your money and you know throw a website on on the internet space. We want to be different. We want to give you the tools um, that you need to have that traffic and that overall digital strategy that we know is so important and critical to your online success. 
our web solution comes with responsive websites. It's completely customizable, easy to edit, drag and drop tools. I'm going to show you what that looks like in a quick second, which means you can keep your content up to date. The ability to create landing pages, forms, lead captures. You as the business owner have complete control over the website content. You own all of the content. Um, you own everything that has to do with your website. And we also give you social media, search engine optimization, and other marketing tools as well. So take a look at how easy it is to edit text. When you click on the editor, you can go ahead and just simply start typing away. And you can see this formatting palette, it just emulates Microsoft Word because most people are familiar with that. So you can easily format text. I'm highlighting here. I can go ahead, click on the color, change the color. Maybe I want to um, bold a little bit. And then I save. It's that simple. So if I own a restaurant and I want to update my specials every day or once a week or however frequently I'd like to update that, I could do this myself. I could have a hostess doing this. I can have an employee doing this. I can have a trusted person doing this. I don't need to hire a professional web developer for $50 to $200 an hour to make very important changes. Adding images or videos or other kinds of um, it forms or whatever is just as easy. It's all drag and drop technology. So what you're seeing here is the image library. Um, so what, you're, what is up here are images that I've already uploaded to my library or um, stock images. And the way that we upload images is just like sending an email attachment. So I click on upload image, browse my computer, select the image, and it gets dropped into my library right here. Then when I want to move that picture into my website, I simply just go ahead and click on the image. I drag it where I want to go and I drop it. And there it is. My image is now part of my website. So again, maintaining accurate content and keeping up my website is so easy to do. And um, again, as you guys saw in the beginning of tonight's session, up-to-date content is critical. Website design and branding is important. We talked about how important having a visually appealing website is um, for your website's performance. Our designers can custom design your website with that professional, strong branding that you're looking for inside of that editor so that you can easily maintain content going forward. You know, designing a website and maining content are two totally different things. We recommend that you get a design package when you purchase a website with us so that you can have that strong branding and have all of our graphic designers do the beautiful part and the integration part of the work for you so that your job is simply just updating content like I showed you before. Um, e-commerce is important. Our e-commerce solution gives you the ability to have um, an online store where people can create wish lists, leave product reviews, pan and zoom products, compare products. They get an account. They can reorder. Um, there's multiple billing options. You as the business owner have the ability to see who's shopping, see what they looked at, see what products were left in a, a cart, but maybe they didn't, you know, they didn't check out. It gives you all kinds of incredible tools so that you have an incredibly dynamic yet easy to use um, e-commerce platform where you can just really have a strong online, pres um, online store. In addition, there are marketing tools, search engine tools, social media tools, a CRM, which is a customer relationship management or an online database. We have an email marketing system built right into our solution. You can have as many domain names and as many email accounts as you want. Um, and just like design, you can choose to do it yourself and you know design the website yourself. You can market your website yourself using our tech support. Um, we have 24-7 tech support. So if you want help with your keywords, tech support can walk you through that. Another option that you have with us is that you can purchase a digital marketing product um, where our uh, team of professional digital um, marketers can actually do that for you. And we have products around social media, um, search engine optimization, Google advertising, um, and Facebook advertising, etc. So these are all things that you can you know, schedule an appointment to learn more about if that's something you want our team to manage for you. We have the power of unlimited. You have as many pages as you want, changes, traffic, email, bandwidth, upgrade, support, et cetera. And now we even have unlimited space. So you don't, you're no longer limited to space on your website. You can have as much space as you want. Um, and we have unlimited customer care, 24 seven home country support. I cannot stress to you enough how important it is to have a support system with your digital strategy. We simplify things for you and we support you in your online marketing endeavors. Um, 
We have a 99.9% .9 uptime, which is actually better than Facebook. <laughs> And um, we have had zero incidences of security breaches in the history of our um, being in business, which has been over 18 years. Um, the last thing I want to do is I just want to recommend that you schedule a 15-minute consultation with the web sensor owner that you're working with or the business owner that you're working with because they can actually give you a series of questions. It takes 10 to 15 minutes so that you can assess um, your current web design and management strategy, your current digital and social media strategy, and also talk about your current business overhead and how they might be able to save you some money on that as well. Um, and so what we recommend that you do, again, is just talk to them and schedule a quick 15 minutes just to answer a couple of questions and figure out what you're doing well, where you might want to get some more information. And from there, what they will do is they'll actually, they have the ability to schedule a full-on appointment, which will typically take anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. And that will allow you to take that assessment and say, okay, I want to learn more about these five things based on what I'm currently doing um, and how you might be able to help me to, to improve upon that. Um, we'll have an expert um, on our solution on the, on the line with you, and they'll be able to walk you through that on a webinar um, so you can get some visuals as well and address your specific concerns. So we're not talking about some timeshare type of appointment where it's just us, you know, somebody trying to sell you something. It's going to be tailored toward your specific needs based on that 15-minute consultation. So please um, talk to the Web Center owner that invited you tonight. If you're an existing customer, give us a call and we can do this with you ourselves and walk you through that and see if we can help you, not just in your website and your design arena, but in your digital and social arena as well. And I do also want to remind everybody that in addition to appointments, we have a, a plethora, a myriad of online resources that are available to you. And, you know, we have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, our website, newsletter, blogs. Um, and of course, we've got 24-7 support. So if you need any support or have any questions whatsoever, you guys are more than welcome to reach out to us. So I hope this has been valuable and helpful for you guys. Um, and I hope that we can support you in your online marketing. And again, I, I highly encourage you guys to schedule an appointment and get some more information, take that assessment and learn more about what your specific needs are and how we might be able to help you.